Five. Let me drop this here and bring this up. Okay, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today is Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. So today, <clears throat> I wanted to start a new series of uh, podcasts, of live streams, talking about the height of art. Uh, in other words, how to make money as an artist. Um, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long Probably right now, it's probably the most requested topic. Um, you know, I get lots of emails and comments and messages, and I, I appreciate them all. I read. So thank you for anyone who's uh, reached out to me. And uh, probably the, the, the thing I get asked the most is, uh, is Chris, how, how do I how break in this industry? How do I get more work? How do I make more money? How do I make a career out of drawing and, and my passion? And, you know, it's something that I've thought a lot about, and I have gone through um, a lot of experience myself. I've been a working artist for over two decades now, and um, it's, it's something besides the, the drawing, which I also enjoy talking about, the uh, the business side, the money making side, is something that uh, I um, you know I I like. It's, it's something that that I, I think a lot about and that I put in the practice uh, every day of my life. And you know I feel that every artist can benefit from having an appreciation of of business of money. You know I'm not that's, I'm not saying stop what we're doing and you know open a business or whatever but um um every artist got to eat every paint and uh, we we all need to address this side of uh, who we are we need to come to terms with it and and you know make make um so anyway that's a that's a my little rant <clears throat> if you're watching me for the first time or if i comment below let me know where are you uh, calling from, watching from, and what time it is for you. I am currently based in Thailand. I'm, I live in Thailand at the moment, and it's 11 o'clock at night for me. Excuse me for a minute. So I appreciate you guys coming on live. What I'd like to do is, um, I'm basically going to, we're going to have a little discussion. Uh, I'm just going to share some of the ideas that I think. And um, uh, at the end, if we have time, I'd like to have a little bit of Q&A. You know, maybe you have some sp some specific code that uh, I may be able to help you with. And um, I'd like for this to be an ongoing discussion. You know, there's, um, just like art, the topic of a business, you know, it's quite complex. There's a lot lot to it. There's a lot to it, and, uh, you know, it's impossible to cover it all in one day. So, is begin this discussion with what I feel is... Um, some of the core principles, right? Just like art principles uh, to this, to the money-making side. Some of the things that I've, I've found from experience and seen from others, you know, and real business people that I, I've gotten to know. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll start there. We'll start with some of the, the, the basics, the fundamentals, the principles. And um, I'd like to start with with the process so just like drawing or drawing a figure you know i always believe that there's a, a process and there's a system to it and in and, and business actually it's even more systematic and money is more of an intellectual activity art is much more of a uh, uh right creative intuitive activity um, but business and money making is is very intellectual uh, uh, ways and um, so you know I, I would like to begin by breaking down the process uh, of what I felt or of what I've seen what I've experienced to be 
the steps to getting yourself to becoming a successful paid artist because I think that's everyone here watching uh, maybe on replay uh, we all we all want to eventually not only be appreciated for what I work but to be to be paid and ho hopefully uh, paid well so that's um that's the goal of this uh, little live stream this little podcast and um, that's our goal for today today we're going to start with a a brief introduction of myself, and then um, I'm going to talk about the about what what I think some of the core concepts of uh, of money making as an artist and the actual process that and, and I think uh, all uh, working artists have this in common. So, um, if you're watching me for the first time, you might be like, "Well, who the hell are you? Why should I listen to you? I don't know you." And you would be uh, would be a very wise thing to do. Skepti skepticism is is very wise. So who 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 am I? Wh why should you listen to me? Why should you care what I have to say? I could be just some broke bum off the internet, right? Who who am I? Um, and I think it's very important. And there, I'm not I'm going to share these things with you, not to brag or say, oh, I'm so much better than you or this or this whatever. I, I want to show you that the um, it's uh, very 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 important who you uh, choose to listen from. It's very very true in art. I think as artists we all know you don't want to you don't want to take drawing classes from a bum from a scrub. Take drawing classes from some somebody badass, right? You don't want some 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 scrub, you know, like like a little kindergartner drawing you know you want steve houston right or you know what i mean you you, you want you want to go to the top and it's same same with making money same with starting with athletic it's all the same you don't you got to be very careful who you take advice from don't take advice from bums or scrubs basically so you know be, be critical be critical and this is this is just me sh uh, showing some proof so uh who, who am i i um i actually got my very first break in 1990 Five, nineteen ninety. Believe it or not, um, I got my very first break in the video game. Five. I um, I dropped out of college. At the time, I um, I broke into a video game company. It was called Terraglyph, and we were doing software games at the time. And I started as a two D animator. Believe it or not, I actually um, draw with the paper and the pavement below. If you know what I'm talking about. Animation with paper back in the day. I used to do I used to do that for for a video game, and then um, uh, and then later, um, I spent a lot of time not working. Actually, uh, that was quite interesting. I, I quit that um, and spent some time away from art, and then eventually moved to Los Angeles. And um, um, then you know my life dramatically changed. Um, I got my very first. Uh, break in entertainment as as a uh, concept artist for a long long time when I was uh, since I was uh, since I was a kid anyway so I I, I worked in video games uh, 2000 I believe um, and the sexiest game I got out of that was Splatter House so I did that for six years I had a six year game career I got in a few books um, Splatter House was a Xbox 360, I forget, it was a long time ago. It's the, it's the sexiest game I ever worked on. And I got in a book, this is one of my um, concept arts for the game. A little creature that made it in the game. Then eventually also did uh, uh, Star Trek, the game. Uh, um, uh, I worked at a company called uh, Cryptic after I left. Um, Bottle Rocket was the name of the video game company. That gave me my break. I worked there for a few years, and I ended up in Cryptic in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and I worked on um, as a concept artist for uh, a Star Trek was the sexiest title they had there, and I got to work on that. And I also got in a few magazines and some books. Um, I got the cover of Star Trek the magazine and a few interior shots. So that's probably the highlight of my time there. And then I left, um, actually, I, I quit games to become a fine artist. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's weird how I, 
uh, I do these things. And um, um, so I spent a few time, I spent some time in Los Angeles uh, uh, working with some of the best artists I could find, uh, Steve Houston, Kevin Chance, Nathan Fawkes. And um, I started to begin this part of my career and I got into teaching and I wrote many, many articles. I wrote for Imagine Effects. It's a British-based uh, magazine, mostly focused on illustration, but um, I wrote for them, oh God, uh, 15, 20 times. I wrote many, many articles for them. And then I um, ended up with New Masters Academy. So comment below if you've discovered me through New Masters Academy. It's a, um, it's the number one uh, online library in the world, you know, and I, uh, um, I have an ongoing relationship with them, and um, I also teach to them. So probably many of you have discovered me through New Masters Academy, and you know, very humbled to be among the great. So I, basically, what I'm saying is, I got known for my teaching too. So I, I got my break as a in entertainment, video games. I started making money. You know, I, I was a salary. Uh, artist, you know, I wasn't making Wall Street money, but um, I, I, I was, and at the time it was quite, I was quite uh, well paid, um, um, you know, uh, salaries in um, San Francisco Bay Area are quite high, but of course the standard of living is, <laughs> is, is very high too. Comment below if you, uh, if you've ever lived in the Bay Area, you know what it's like. And then, um, so I moved into teaching. I ended up teaching at New Masters Academy, wrote articles, and um, I taught at Noman. Noman Visual School was formerly known as School of Visual Effects. One of the, It's arguably the top VFX school in the world. So I taught there for a few years. So I began, I began teaching and, and painting. Uh, I got in a few shows, did some, sold, sold some paintings, did a few commissions. You know, I, I, I was just beginning that part of my career. Um, and then, um, I, um, I finally, uh, stumbled into movie posters. I mean, I, I say stumbled, but I've been exposed to movie poster work for a long, long, long time. You know, you, living in LA, you, um, you, 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 you know about it, you hear about it. And, um, that's currently what I'm doing now for work. Excuse me. Um. So probably many of you uh, watching, maybe you've taken my recent boot camp or you've seen my see me on Instagram. But um, these are just some; these are actual uh, illustrations I got paid for. I do the black and white concepts. No finishes yet, but I'm working on it. And it's just a sheet of some of the sexy titles I've worked on uh, in, the, in 2017, I believe. And. Um, you know, looking back, I uh, I wish I had done this sooner uh, because it's the highest paid work I've ever done and it uh, it blows away video game money <laughs> uh, by, it's not even close. It's, it pays very, very handsomely. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, th there's a reason they, they it pays well um, because there's, it takes incredible demand uh, on you, um, you know, you you have to, they have other qualities besides drawing, which we will talk about as well. And then, um, and then last year I wrote two books. Um, the first one was more of a, a diagram book, 100 Faces and Figures, and Life Drawing for Artists. So uh, I'm, I'm officially an author now. Um, you know, that was one of the things in my bucket list was to have a book. And um, I finally wrote, I wrote two last year. Uh, so comment below if you have one of my books. This one, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been something I've been having on my mind for a long time, sort of a, a way to help people get into life drawing. Life drawing, I believe, is something that has uh, changed my life in terms of skill set. You know, if I, uh, if, if there's one thing that has enabled, if there's one skill set that has enabled me to, to achieve what I have and make the money that I have and get all these sexy projects that I have, it's, it's life drawing, sitting in front of a naked model. But anyway, that's, we'll talk about skills too. This is not really about that. So um, that's, um, sorry, that's, um, 
that's just that's who 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 I am. It's a brief bio, ten minute bio. Uh, I just I just again to remind you, I'm not 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 trying to show off, not trying to brag, but uh, you know, be be careful who you listen to. Make sure make sure there's proof. I always, I always say proof proof in the game, proof in the pudding. So that that's that's my proof that I I do have some experience in this. Um, now the the thing that I want to point out is that. And something I've always wanted to talk about is that um, when I look back at my career, professional career, I have actually broken into the entertainment industry one, two, three, four times. Four times. Uh, first time in 1995. I got my very first entertainment job, uh, animator for a software game company. Then I broke into console games, uh, Bottle Rocket, Splatter House. Then I um, actually I got laid off in uh, 2008, so there was a big financial crash in the U.S. Um, so you know, um, lots of people got laid off, including me. You know, I lost my job at the time, so I had to kind of um, retool myself, and then I got I count, I count uh, Cryptic, the Star Trek game, as as breaking in because it was such a, you know, part of my friends, such a shitty. I mean, that was the lowest in my life that I've seen that the U.S. economy, uh, two thousand eight, everything. Uh, you know, lots of lots of people were out of work, the economy went to hell. So I count that as, as a break. I was able to to retool myself and break in to um, a cryptic which was doing mmos at the time that's what they're famous for and then finally um movie poster sketch artist um so I've, I've i've been there i I've, I've been i've been broke i've been an amateur i've been a student and i've been a professional and i've i've broken industries um and if you count if you count writing a book that's that's five really um so how did I get there? I think that's that's what we're going to talk about. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about you, right? <laughs> how did how did I get here? Um, that's what we all want to know. And I think what what I um, what I've done to get here is nothing new. And what I'm going to share with you is nothing new. I didn't invent any of this information or this knowledge or these techniques. I didn't invent any of it. It's all something that's already out there but hopefully uh, I'm going to be a you know provide a voice for creative people for artists who may not be exposed to this uh, kind of information okay so um, one of the things I um, actually I should I should probably put a drawing, huh? It's so boring to look at a blank screen. I'm going to put one of my drawings on the screen. I'm working on, uh, I ordered some tech, but it's late. It's out of stock. So hopefully I'll be able to have multiple cameras available soon on these streams. I'm not happy with this drawing, but uh, just something I want to work on today. Um, so one of the, um, 
one of the realizations uh, I've come to, and this is uh, getting into fundamentals, so um, or core concepts, right? Core principles. One of the things that um, I have come to to learn um, as I mature and as I, um, you know, study business aspects and you know, um, um, uh, try to learn how, how, you know, how to become a better professional, better business person, is that um, in a lot of ways, um, the, the, real, the, the mind shift that I made that helped me to, um, um, I would say, become more successful artist is that I started to look outside of myself. In other words, um, and I have it in my notes, that um, the mindset that, that helped me was realizing that it's not, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not, or it's not about me, right? Not about you. And what that means is that, um, is that a lot of people mistakenly think, or not mistakenly, but they have this, attitude that's all about me that I'm going to um, you know it's it's a, a short way of saying it's about getting right oh I want an art job for me I want clients for me I want to get money I want to get paid me me right but the reality is that to make to make money money is actually a transaction it's a transaction that, that happens between two parties. And um, money is exchanged for s something that is valuable to someone else. So um, once I started to think, okay, what is valuable to other people that they're willing to exchange money, to pay me for, to hire me, that's when I... Um, I really started, my mind started to open because, um, because uh, you know, as artists, we tend to spend a lot of time like this, right? You know, in our sketchbook, just alone, you know, uh, being an artist is a very isolated thing. And then we, when we go out to the world, we try to think, okay, you know, appreciate me, hire me. But um, if, I think if you want to, to fully, uh, to reach the height of your uh, career and your potential and your earning potential, I think it's it's best to outwardly focus. Think about uh, think think about think outside of yourself. Think of others. Think of how you can add value to someone else with your drawings, with your paintings, with your skills. So think outside of yourself. Think outside of yourself. I think that's 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 the first principle. Uh, I, I want to drop today. I know, like, uh, mindset talk is is kind of boring, and probably a lot of you want want some tactics. So we'll, we'll get into some tactics now. But I, I just I just wanted to begin with that, um, because if I could go back, there's there's like five things, and we'll probably talk about this in a future episode. There's like five things, or it's really five things that if I could go back to my 19 year old self the self that that you know got my first break in in video games there's five things i would i would tell myself and two of those things would probably dramatically change my life or anybody's life especially if it's the first time you've heard it and one is is to um what three of those things one is is to think outside of yourself think of how you or what you do or the skills you have can be a value value to someone else. You will not you will not get paid unless you are valuable to someone else. You will not get hired by a studio unless your drawing, your digital painting, your graphic design is not valuable uh, to them in some way. You will not you will not shine unless you can offer something of value to them to so start thinking about start thinking outside of you and think of you know uh, i mean um you know 
the the word cu- customer comes to mind. You know, if a, a lot of people who may have negative associations with with business or money, they may like not like the word uh, customer. But in, in a lot of ways, um, that's that's what it is. I mean, the best businesses are customer focused, and um, the best working and consistently working professional artists are client focused clients are your customers i mean like just you know just one example for for me you know i i would not i i would not be working if i didn't if i didn't take care of the of the poster clients i have i, I would have nothing if if i wasn't good to 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 you guys, if I didn't take care of you, all the students who bought, buy my courses, buy my books, if I didn't take, if I didn't, you know, think of you first, uh, you 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 wouldn't be here watching me. You wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't be here. And uh, so that that's that's something to think about. Start to think outside of yourself, and um, and realize that it's not it's not necessarily about you. Um, it's about what value you can give to someone else. That's enough of this foo-foo talk. Let's talk about some tactics. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to describe a process. I'm going to describe a process. Just like drawing drawing um, a head, you know, there's a process, the... Uh, the head to the, the lines to the core shadow, right? This process um, in g- getting getting work or getting more work. There's a certain process that you have to follow, and I think um, that's something that um, I've come to realize that there's a cons- and if there's a consistency to this process. So let me see if I can write this down. It would be nice to have a whiteboard. It's going to be my whiteboard. So um, the first thing, well, let me just go ahead and try this. I can use uh, So the process, okay, begins with you, right? Um, and at the end is success. So success, whatever that means. Maybe, maybe you want to break into the entertainment industry. Maybe you, um, um, uh, maybe you want uh, more freelance cl- uh, clients. Maybe you want to draw comic books. Maybe you want to publish your own book. 
Maybe you want to um, uh, do portrait commissions, oil painting commissions. So um, that's defined. That's up to you. What success means to you. So you. Now, the next step is um, what I call actually, it should be uh, an X, not an arrow, it should be an X. Presentation. Presentation means um, how you uh, package yourself, how you present yourself to the world. As artists, we have portfolios. So do you have, you know, how, how does your portfolio look? Are you, you know, do you have a nice organized portfolio? Is your portfolio all over the place? Is your portfolio on deviant art still? Right, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not there's nothing wrong with that, but you, you know what I mean. That's that's presentation. Um, let's say you have a nice portfolio and you go to the interview, but you look like crap, right? You look like crap, or you're rude. You're, you're rude. Maybe maybe you're, you're a nice person, but you just come in a bad mood and you're not prepared to your interview, right? Um, that's presentation too, presenting yourself, right? So there's lots of little nuggets. So it's you, and we'll talk more about you, your attributes, times your presentation, Times number of people. Oops, this is an equals. Number of people. Now, number of people. Um, let's say you um, you want to uh, do uh, commissions. Let's say you want to do uh, portrait commissions, um, and you have beautiful artwork. So you, yourself, you have nice attributes. You have nice artwork. You have a beautiful, clean, organized website, very clean and detailed and specific, you know. Uh, so you got pretty nice presentation. But for whatever reason, you don't want to show it to anybody. Or maybe you just show it to four people, your mom, your brothers and sisters, your roommate, whatever. Um. Now, if your those number of people are quite well connected, um, you you will achieve some level of success. But um, I think the, the the point I'm trying to make is um, this number will dramatically determine the size of this number. So if your goal, let's say your goal is to make a thousand dollars extra a month, and um, you sell um, one of your, um, let's say you sell, you want to make extra thousand dollars a month. You sell a, um, a, uh, I'm trying to think of a, something to sell. Let's say you sell a black and white charcoal drawing for $200, like this, A4, 8 by 10. Well, you're going to have to, right, to get to get $1,000 a month, you're going to need to uh, dramatically bump up this number of people because not everyone's going to buy your uh, charcoal drawing. So you're going to have to also, um, goes back to presentation, where are you showing your work counts as presentation. Let's say your goal is... Oops.
let's say your goal is you want freelance client for illustration. Let's say you want to draw uh, magic cards, magic cards, magic the gathering. Um, if you show to one person, if you show your portfolio to one company, one art director, what are your chances of success? Mm. If you show your portfolio to 10, what are your chances of success? A little better, right? If you show your portfolio to 100, now you see what I'm saying? What if you show your portfolio to 100 people, but your presentation, let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, your presentation is like off the charts. It's like a 9. You not only have a clean, organized website, clean, organized social profiles, but you, um, you know the exact right places to go. You not only go online, but you go offline. You, uh, you contact, you actually go to studios and actually meet people in person. So um, your chances of success will, will dramatically go up. So anyway, that's, uh, this is really the simplified way I think about it. Now I think throughout this series, I'd like to, you know, we're going to break down each one, right? There's big bullet points, bullet point, right? We can explore each one for whatever end goal you have in mind. But this is the kind of the framework, the process um, that I did. Um, I'll just a quick example. Um, I was 19 years old. How did I get? How did I get 19 college dropout? How did I get hired at, at a video game company at 19? <clears throat> well, I had a okay portfolio. Let's say portfolio. On a scale of 1 to 10, it was, looking back, it was quite terrible. I'd say 5. Now, uh, presentation. Um, my presentation uh, was okay. I didn't have an, a website back. I think I did. I don't remember now. 1995. Oh, Internet was just invented, actually. Was it just invented? Yeah, it was around there. God, that's how old I am. So my presentation was a flippy book, flippy book. So that gave me, you know, back then the, a nice book. That's a high presentation. But what I had, let's say on a scale of one to five, it's like a six. But what I had was I, um, I, I had a good friend who worked at the company had a good friend who worked at the company and um, you know because of him he amplified my presentation so it kind of like made it square so that's part of what well, you know that guess that counts as number of people too so um, so instead of multiplying he gave me a square so that really bumped up my presentation so that led to me getting getting um, that job um, when I got my movie poster first movie poster job um, Let's say attributes I, on a scale of one to ten, I had an eight. You know, just whatever. Uh, presentation. My website was 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 okay. Um, let's say it was, it was an eight. It was it was it was just an ordinary ugly blog spot, but it was very clean and organized, very laser focused. Number of people I I contacted, dozens of people. Let's just say a hundred. So my high I had high attributes, really good presentation. I reached out to a lot of people, and boom, what do you know? Leads to success. So that's just a quick, um, uh, what I'd like to do now is, um, I guess we don't have much time for questions now. I think um, um, tomorrow, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break for questions now. Thank you guys for um, for coming online here. You know, I know this is just a brief um, a brief little introduction. Um, 
and um, into um, into the process. But um, uh, uh, next, you know, I'm going to expand on these uh, each topics. Now, today, before before I break for questions and Q and A, um, I want to leave you with this: is that um, I think we all know and understand that of this diagram, the um, the number one thing that determines the success of this uh, is your attributes, and as we all, I think we all know, that number one attribute um, is skill. If you're to list your attributes, number one has to be skill. So I just want to leave you with that. And then tomorrow I'm going to talk about ways to to bump that up. Because I think we all we all know, especially those who um, um, who are like me. You know, I'm sure if you're watching this, you're you you're like me. You're more into the realism side of things. Um, you know your your work has to look good. It has to reach a high level uh, of skill, and we we all know that. And I think I just want to make that clear off the gate. There's no, uh, you know, you know you you could talk to a uh, hundred thousand people, but if if your first attribute is low, uh, you know that's that's going to be a problem. Now that doesn't mean you sh you should not talk to a thousand people. But you know what I mean. Um, I don't want any um, any misconception that um, that in this game, uh, if you're if you're listening to me, you're in the realist game. Um, skill has to be your cornerstone. Your your has to be the 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 bottom layer of your pyramid, <laughs> right? You know. Right here. It has to be a big chunk of, of who you are, what bring what you bring to the table. Remember what I said earlier that it's it's not about you, right? It's about your audience, it's about your customers, it's about your clients. Well, the only reason why they well the main reason why they think you are valuable to them is because of this. Is because of this. They want they they to them your skills are valuable so that could now with, with that in mind you know we that could mean different things for different people for example um um you know uh let's say let's say you want to be a concept artist you want to be a concept artist you want to work on triple a games well um Maybe for you, skill means you're a badass environment artist. Maybe you can do do sick environments, and you're a wizard at um, at Photoshop. Or maybe you're um, um, you want to do uh, ma magic cards. Maybe you are um, maybe you are like a brilliant at designing dragons. You know, maybe your figures are. Are okay, but maybe you, you you're like world class at designing dragons, so that that you know um, that is a unique attribute to you. So I'm not I'm not saying that you know you have to be a super realist like you know like like Bujaro to get anywhere in this game. But you know, um, skill is what w without skill n none of this really works. I mean, I, I could show you how how to write emails. I can show you how to clean up your website. I can show you how to 
have a clean online profile. I can show you how to contact professionals, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so let's let's just get that. I should have made that clear at the beginning. The 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 oh, none of this works unless you have this the, your period the bottom the foundation doesn't work unless you have skill as your foundation. Now um uh you know that's probably why you 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 follow people like me or other online teachers or you t maybe take classes or you're uh, drawing maybe you're drawing right now you know that that's great too um uh, but that's 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 the prerequisite so let, let, i just want to get that out of the way um and i'm going to leave you with this so this this will be my my nugget for today the fastest way in my experience and in my mind to get skill quickly, maybe you're, you're new or maybe you're just transitioning into art, maybe you have a past career, you're a programmer, you're an engineer and you're transitioning to art or maybe you're starting to, you want more clients. The fastest way to get skill, to upgrade your skill, to upgrade your attribute, your number one attribute of skill is to model success. Model success. Model success. Meaning, um, um, follow the, the path, the work, the behavior, if you can, ideally, of the most successful person. Who, who, whoever's here, whoever's here, where you want to be, do exactly what they do. Exactly what they do. Exactly what they do. If they eat, if they eat, um, um, you know, if if they eat fruit and cereal in the morning, you know, you could eat. No, I'm kidding. You know, but you know what I mean. Model success. Um, when one way as artists we all do that is is that we we can copy their work. Maybe maybe the person you want to be is J.C. Leindecker. You want to be this, or Muka. You want to be this beautiful poster artist, illustrator. Um, maybe your idea of success is Muka, and well, Muka's passed away, so what you can do is you could, you know, you could copy his work uh, to the best of your ability. And um, that's something to think about, which again brings back to the beginning of what I said is, is be, be careful who you take advice from be careful who you model, you know. So when you model someone, always try to um, uh, start with the end goal in mind. Think about someone who's where you want to be and, and model success. So here's your assignment. Here's today's little little tactic. So I want you to list your top 10 favorite artists, five that... Um, and make sure at least five are still alive and still working. So list your top top ten favorite artists, and make sure that five are are alive and working. And start to collect their work. Maybe you're already doing this, but really, like, really start to collect their work. And start to look at it, uh, copy it, do master copies, and I'll talk about that in future episodes. But that's that's one thing to take away today is to model success and start to get an idea, a clear idea of who's successful, who's where, where you want to be, and st start to become very, very familiar with their work, their daily habits. Ideally, you want to meet them. You want to go meet them. All right, so that's um, that's the end of the uh, little chat. I know this this first episode is probably not going to be too exciting. It's a lot, you know. It's more it's more of an introduction, but um, you know, like I said, we'll definitely expand on this. So, thank you for joining me today. Let me uh, check out the chat room here. Alejandro, hello. Justin, hello. Eden, good morning. Archana from India, hello. Eden from San Francisco. Well, wow, welcome, San Francisco Bay Area. Hello from Brazil, Mr. Solid Franco. VIV, hello from India. 
Arseny Moscow. Wow, thank you for joining us. I believe you're the first Moscow viewer I've had live. Oh, second Moscow viewer. Thank you, guys. Eden from NMA. NMA, NMA, yes. Hello, Peter. Thank you. Eden. Oh, Eden knows the cost of living in SF. Oh, Justin says both your books. Thank you so much. Wow. Found you through Imagine Effects. Wow, Mark Tover. Man, back in the day. From Argentina, hello. Dutch, hello. Listening while working on a rush page. Yes. Yeah, Dutch is a, um, a comics artist. And um, I believe he does a lot of coloring work at the moment. Oh, sorry there. Um, do you mean this note move the notepad? Eden says, how different would you be if you drew for yourself? Um, that's a good question. You know, I have a lot of, uh, I have like a series of fine art paintings in mind. And um, in a lot of ways, it's... Um, yeah, uh, it is a very it's a very selfish in a way because I have no intention of selling them or showing them. So it is just for me. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. I would probably do a lot more nudes. I think if I was in my in my in my ideal scenario, I would just I would basically be John Asaro. I think he has like the lifestyle that I I want. He basically f paints nudes, mostly women. Colorful. I, I would lives in San Diego near the beach. I would, I would, I would. That's it. <laughs> that's my life. Um. And I would, yeah, I would also do landscape painting. Hello, me, 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 hello. Thank you for joining us. Archana says, suppose I'm interested in figure and portrait drawing, but you want more de decline towards landscapes and abstract. Should I recognize the demand and change my focus? That's a great question. I would say no. I would say no because um, you will... Ar Archan asked a great question. If I'm interested in figure drawing but I'm getting requests for landscapes or abstracts, what should I do? I would say the process, the number one attribute is your skill and you'll, you will get better at something that you love. You will get better at something that you love. So... Focus on the figure if you love it more. Uh, then we'll talk about ways how, because th then it comes to uh, second part, which is presentation. How do you show your work? Once you built your attributes, how do you get it out there? How do you present it in a, in a way that's meaningful? Archana says, after doing landscapes and abstracts may involve less intensive study. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I feel... I feel very bad for people who like realism. I, I really do. I mean, I'm talking to myself. It's just, it is just a brutal game. They just, these damn things take so long. Ugh. These drawings take so long. Chris, can you give us a rough ranking which illustration fields pay well, pay okay, and pay very badly? Okay, illustration field, that's a, that's a broad term. And I have very limited experience. You know, I've, um, I... I, off the top of my head, entertainment art, so video games, um, pay well at the highest level, over six figures, but you know, you got to be at like Naughty Dog. I don't even know if uh, Blizzard or Riot pays that much. To be honest, I don't know. I'm assuming they do. Some, If you've been there, maybe years, but um, in general, that's... Um, that's kind of out of your control. Unfortunately, game salaries, especially video game salaries, in a lot of ways, it's out of your out of your control. So that's kind of unfortunate. It is a very fickle. It's a fickle way to make money, uh, video games. That's that's why I I was very, um, you know, I'm very um, very happy to have found something else. Uh, but video games does pay well at the highest levels. You could you could make six figures, hundred k, um, as a video game artist. It might it might take you years. Yeah, and you have to move a lot, so that's that's tough. Poster artist, um, sketch artist can easily make six figures. It's um, yeah, you can make 
a thousand bucks a day um at, at the top level you can start at 500 a day 600 dollars a day um uh, freelance illustration um uh, you know magic cards i'm not quite sure but you know uh, i would charge i would charge uh, um um well, for an oil painting, I would charge 500 like this, 8 by 10, 500 US dollars. So I'd probably charge something around there. Um, so that's that's a good, uh, anybody who's into uh, magic cards or card illustration, um, that would be a good assignment. Find out find out who the best artists, most successful artists are and um, find out how much they make. But um, and I've also done comics and comics pays the worst. Comics is just, oh my God, it's so brutal, especially print comics. Oh my God. I did, I um, actually did a brief, I did some pages um, for an independent comic. Uh, when was this? Independent comic publisher. And uh, yeah, I didn't get paid much. I also, yeah, actually I did card illustrations too. Um yeah, I think I got two hundred fifty dollars per card illustration. This was also in the Bay Area. I got this client through Cryptic. So yeah, so there's like four things out of all of those uh, movie posters by far. Uh, but movie posters is quite fickle too. There's a lot of down down downsides to it. Um, but generally, anything in advertising pays well because uh, advertising budgets are so high. That's why, um, you know, Lion Decker, uh, Rockwell, all those greats, they did, uh, they did magazine covers which are, and ad advertising illustrations. They got paid a truckload of money. They were um, millionaires, I believe. So anything along the lines of advertising. Uh, Archan asks, I don't know if I'll be good enough for figure drawing. Is it just a topic that attracts me rather than landscapes? Um, yes. Now, um, good enough means, um, good enough can mean different things, you know, um, and it depends on what success means to you. Now, if good, if success means to you, you want to, you want your work to look realistic like, like a Bujiro. You know, then, then, then that has different criteria. But maybe you want to maybe have more. Uh, you know, to you, success could be someone like, um, like a Van Gogh. You know, Van Gogh was, you know, his he, you know, he made. I, I believe he was broke his whole life, but um, you know, he achieved level of success. He didn't have to be a realistic drafts person. So that's something to think about. Is kind of kind of get to know who you are. Hope that helps. Ramon says, "I live in NYC. Want to work in entertainment, designing movie posters. Do companies work in L? Yes. Do companies work with remotely? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I I lived in Thailand for two years, and I believe there are ad there are a handful of ad agencies in New York. So, Ramon, I would um, not waste any time and target your local market first." That's my advice to anyone. Um, there's, there's like three big movie poster hubs. From what I know in the world, at least in the English-speaking world, is um, Hollywood, New York, um, was for London, and India. Now I don't know. I don't know how the Indian movie poster process is, but I believe that. For sure, New York's exact same as as America because because it's it's advertising, it's advertising, is the industry really. So look into New York. Oh, Dutch says Adam Hughes. Yeah, Adam Hughes. Oh, he's fantastic. He's fantastic. Oh, I love his work. Morpheus asks, I have a question. I tried different art styles and contents as an illustrator and graphic designer. Is it good to show this 
or that I show the best of some specific topic? That's a great question. Should I show a broad or should I show specialized? I always say error on the specialized um, because the more you are, the because that affects the number of people, right? Uh, and presentation. Because the more specific you are, it improves your presentation. It makes you just look more focused, more direct, and then that'll help you um, get to where you want to be. So I would say specific. Now, if you like a bunch of things, make two separate portfolios. That's what I would do. But be very, very specific as you can. Laser focused, I always say. The problem I find with internet is there's too much information that you get overwhelmed. Yeah, God. Alejandro says, too much information on the internet. I agree. Daniel says, did you ever struggle with finding a style you want to work with and develop naturally over time? Um, I, well, I always, I always model like what, I always copied who I wanted to be. So when I very first, uh, when I was like 16 or 17, I, uh, I loved, anim actually when I was a kid, I loved animation all growing up. So I used to draw Bugs Bunny. I used to draw uh, Looney Tunes. I used to draw Bugs Bunny. And then as I mat matured, um, I drew, I drew He-Mans. And then um, I, um, He-Mans, 80s cartoon. <laughs> and then when I was 16 or 17, I became obsessed with Capcom. With Street Fighter, and then that really literally changed my life. Is because uh, in a lot of ways, I still kind of draw Capcom y. So, uh, my style, my, my, my style comes from who I admire, really. Like right, right now, I admire poster artists, so uh, my style is very poster y, realistic, illustrative looking. Alejandro says, I want to draw and paint, but I only sketch. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Actually, you can make, you can be very successful as a sketch artist. That's, you know, that's what I do. I don't do any painted finishes um, yet, yet. Uh, first person that comes to mind is Peter Han. He's a former colleague of mine. Uh, King, King, Kim jong Yi. They're both basically very, very, very successful uh, sketch artists. You could... You can achieve a high level of success just sketching in your sketchbook. That that is very 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 possible for for anybody. Mark Jackson says, "Learning structure? Do you mean drawing structure, Mark? What are your tips for learning structure?" Um, well, I don't want to get too much into this, but into drawing topics, but. Um, Do um, spotlight uh, cast drawings. That's a great way. Or still lives if you don't have a cast. Do still life, still lives of cast drawings or figure. I, I learned from drawing figures and academic lighting because that, that core shadow will give you the corner. Because structure, to me, is about corners. And the... Um, the linear structure model, I just, I learned by copying Steve's work. I just, I was obsessed with Steve Houston for a long time. I'm sure some of you know or can see. Uh, Mihailo, Mihailo, forgive me. Um, will the stream stay on YouTube? Yes. All these streams will be archived. Will you be doing a session of critique if we send your artwork? Um, no, not at the moment. Um, but I am putting together a... Um, a, a forum where people can get feedback from you because I think that's very important. Daniel says, I want to illustrate Magic Card just to say I've done it. I love the game. Oh, yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, it's a good, really good income and it's freelance. Dutch says, I hear you on comics. Uh, Chana from Odisha. Oh. Oh, welcome. I joined oh, Mr. Chin's here. That's sad about comics because I like them. They're really fun. But I still have a question. What about storyboarding? Oh, storyboarding uh, pays well. I did one day of storyboarding. I got paid $600 for one day. Um, yeah, storyboarding pays really well. 
Really well. Um, is that what you meant? How much it pays? I, I would if if you love storyboarding, I would pursue it. There is a fuck ton of work. My God, I I don't love it enough, but God damn, it looks like a fun job. It looks like a really fun job, and uh, it pays well. There's a lot of work, so definitely pursue storyboarding. And there's so many guys teaching it. There's so many, um, well, not so many. There's a handful of professionals who teach storyboarding online. One that comes to mind is Rad Seacrest. Rad Seacrest, um, I, I knew him personally when I lived in L.A. He does storyboarding for animation. He teaches uh, online. I would look him up, Rad Seacrest. Um, I seem to be afraid of success. Any tips for getting out of your way? Oh, Dutch has a great mindset question. We'll talk about that moving forward, Dutch, because mindset is a big part of it. And I have some ideas for you, Dutch, but... I would say, just by reading your question, Dutch, uh, Dutch asks, I'm afraid of success. Uh, I, I'm afraid of success. Any tips for getting out of your own way? And um, just by your question, it goes back to what I said earlier, is that it's not about you. So um, start to think about someone else. Start to think about, and if not someone else, start to think about something larger. Perhaps... Um, like, I don't know, if you have a family, you know, start to think about them. Like, how would your wife and your children, if you have them, how would their lives benefit if you were a more successful artist? Or maybe you're, you're single and you want to be remembered. You want to you want to you want to leave. You want to be remembered in history books. That was something I've always wanted. I still want, you know, growing up. I want to have some kind of legacy. I want to be remembered, you know. Um, how will... You know, how will someone, how will an art student 100 years from now remember you? You know, that's a that's a crappy example. But start to think outside yourself. Mr. Chin says, I don't think Hollywood movies are hiring artists movie posters. They look Photoshop. Oh, yeah, they're all um, Hollywood movies hiring artists for posters. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Bo oh, Bollywood movies. Oh, yeah, I don't know the process. They may not have a sketch artist in the process. Uh, you know, the, the, the Hollywood has a sketch artist in the process. Bollywood movies 80s used to hire painters. Yeah, I saw some videos online of um, some Indian artists who literally paint the poster like on the billboard with paint. So, um, and I'm not sure how much they pay, but hey, that's, that, that is a level of success. I mean, if, if that's something that you love and enjoy, painting gigantic murals basically, of 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 actors and you get paid handsomely that to me is that to me is a job that is a win Mihaly says i love peter Hahn. me too we ever do mentorship again or something else yes chris h we ever do mentorship again yes um uh, not so much group mentorship um uh, i don't i don't have time for uh one-on-one -on -one, but i am doing a group mentorships group coaching very soon yes thank you chris so make sure you subscribe to my email for that. Um, Constantine, like storyboarding. Mr. Chin says, one famous Indian painter called F. Man F. Hussain used to draw movie posters. He paints horses. Are sold in millions. Don't know how. That's a win. Mr. Chin's talking about an artist named M. F. Hussain who now sells paintings in the millions. That's a win. Yeah. All right. So let's cut out here. I really appreciate you guys for joining me online. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about, um, God, um, we're going to talk about some specific uh, tactics to improve your skill and to um, get your work out there. And um, if you're watching me for the first time, make sure you subscribe to my email list and Um, you know, I send all the, uh, the live class schedules and other free content as well by email. So subscribe there. And um, yeah, tomorrow will be the same time. Oh, one more question from Mr. Block. And this is a fantastic question. Mr. Block says, I live in a third world country. Is there any chance for me to get in the art industry? Absolutely. And I love this question because now I live in Thailand. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's one of the wealthier countries in Southeast Asia, but um, um, I have seen it with my own eyes. 
I have seen. In fact, in fact, we're going to meet them. That's one of my goals. I'm going to bring together. I'm going to bring together the most successful people that I know, including local, born and bred, Thai artists who are making quite a bit of money. Uh, it's unbelievable. It just, it's, it's just. Um, it it can it can be done. So. Um, so uh, look look forward to that. I'm very excited for for to introduce you guys to them and and, and to share their stories as well because um, uh, it's possible for anybody. So thank you guys uh, for joining me live. I look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow at the, at the same time of the next stream. So until next time, take care.